Welcome back. This week, we're uploading Tiny CLR on First Spider, and then we're using Visual Studio 2017. As you might know, with the latest release of Tiny CLR, we now support all of our uh, NXP devices. We added the NXP uh, support package to Tiny CLR sources, so you could actually even port it to other NXP products. But uh, as out of the box, we give you EMX support, we give you uh, USB Easy support, um, uh, G120 support, all that is already included in Tiny CLR today, the 0.6 release. And this will automatically include the Fez Spider, since Fez Spider 1 uh, uses EMX and Fez Spider 2 uses G120. Uh, we have thousands of these out, and uh, there are some people who are not very happy that they couldn't use the latest Visual Studio. And today I can tell you that yes, you can use the latest Visual Studio with latest software, and the API has changed from the way it was before, so now it's more. Uh, in line of what you would experience on Windows 10 IoT. So if you've tried Raspberry Pi with Windows 10, for example, then you will get a similar experience uh, controlling uh, the hardware, like I, um, analog inputs and GPIO, etc. Uh, this is right here is a uh, Spider 2, and what I have connected already is a Spider 1. They are awfully similar. We tried to keep them like as close as possible. It was an upgrade at some point. Um, so everything I'm telling you today is will work on, on both. There might be slight differences, but everything is also documented on the website and our documentation. So if you go under docs.ghielectronics.com and from there, under the hardware section, there is legacy products. Under legacy, there's Gadgeteer. Under there, you'll find Spider 1, Spider 2, and the other products. Uh, the, all the instructions are detailed right on these pages. I'm just putting this in a video so you can, you don't have to read, you can just enjoy the video and you're, you're good to go using your uh, spider. So if we go on, on that page, uh, it talks about why you should use uh, TinyCLR OS, that's the upgrade. We are no longer um, supporting uh, NetMF or that is what we are heading towards. Uh, Tiny CLR OS is still in, in the works. It's still not done, uh, but that's where we are heading. Um, the first thing you need to do, and this is, this is like a, a little bit tricky to understand. Um, there is a bootloader on EMX and G120 and other products, uh, the older products, and that our bootloader version, version one, that's the bootloader we created like 10 years ago. This bootloader is lo used to load the firmware, whatever software you need to load on the device. Now, uh, since then, a lot has changed. Uh, we were like Windows XP or even before that, and, and then 7 and 8 and whatnot, and now we are at Windows 10. Unfortunately, uh, Windows 10 didn't play nice with our old bootloader. Uh, the bootloader is not made to be updated, it's locked, and updating it is quite complex. So what we did is give you a version 2 bootloader, our latest bootloader, which works beautifully with any operating system. Uh, we give you this bootloader, and this bootloader sits on top of the version 1 bootloader. That doesn't get erased. This is just sits as a second one. So the system boots up, it runs version 1, version 1 hands um, uh, execution to version 2, and then version 2 takes over and everything from version 2 and up, version 2 up is the same on all, uh, you get the same experience on all, all products. So if you're, for example, we're working now on an update tool, TinyCLR config tool to help you with update firmware. Once you have loaded version 2 bootloader, then this tool will very easily uh, will help you in, uh, in updating the firmware uh, with a couple clicks and even downloads the files for you. That's still in the works. Today, I'm showing you the manual instructions. You need to understand this anyway. Most of you are experts and they, you want to know the details. So we're, we're showing, you, showing you the details, explaining anything. But then one day you want to use TinyCL config, go for that. And of talking, let's get going. So the first thing you need to do is to load version 2 bootloader. 
Uh, like I said earlier, version one doesn't play nicely with uh, latest operating system. So if you probably have Windows uh, 10 on your machine. And if you plug in, if you put the device into bootloader mode, plug in the device to your computer, as it shows here on, on the page, you will get an error, error code 10. That's what uh, you will see on your PC. There's no work around, it, around this. So the only way to update the only way to update the, uh, the bootloader is using serial or using an old machine. You just need to do this one time, load version two bootloader, and then you never need to worry about this again. So find an old machine, or if you have the serial module like I have right here, this is basically goes to a serial port on socket 11, and then I can talk to the board serially instead of over USB. Now I'm also using the USB module, but this is only used for power. This is the red module, and it's providing power to the system. So step one is you need uh, a pen or something pointy and you need to change these switches to the on position. Uh, they're all in the off position. So I'm just going to do all four of them in the on position. And now they are. Press reset. This is going to reset the, uh, the board. And because I set all four of them, uh, the board is in in bootloader mode and it's in serial mode. If you want it in USB mode because you're using an older PC, um, you can do switches one, two, and three, just skip uh, switch number four. Again, this is all detailed on the website. So after I do this, I go to, uh, I open a terminal software, we use TerraTerm, and then in TerraTerm, you wanna open uh, the serial port, uh, and that will be this virtual serial port right here. If we are using USB, you would open the USB virtual port, but this is not gonna work on Windows 10 because of the old bootloader, so I'm using the USB port on the FTDI chip. Uh, your PC should load the driver automatically for that. If not, then you can find the drivers on the FTDI website. Open the port. Now this is the real serial port, not a virtual serial port. So you need, in this case, you need to change the baud rate uh, to 115200. So go to serial port uh, settings and change the baud rate to 115200. And from here, I can now uh, enter E, it has to be, uh, it's case sensitive, so shift key, erase all memory, are you sure? Yes, and this will now go through erasing the entire memory on the EMX module. I'm, I'm doing EMX Spider 1, G120 on Spider 2, very similar, yeah, you, yeah, I, I would still recommend you uh, take a look at the instructions on the website. Uh, it's done, and now I need to load bootloader version 2. Normally we would load tiny booter, but before, and now we're loading the new bootloader. X, uh, start file transfer. From here, transfer, it's an X modem, transfer, send. I need to select 1K, and then find my EMX bootloader. It's a GHI file type. And now it's deploying. See some LED blinking here, it's talking to the device, it's done. And now I switch all, I change all switches back to the off position. That's all we need to do. And from this point on, it's very easy. You don't need to worry about getting a machine running Windows 7 or, and you don't need this. I can actually disconnect it right now. I don't need it. So reset the board. I did reset, I reset it again. Um, so the board resets, I heard some noise. That's because the bootloader is running on here in serial, uh, in virtual serial mode. Uh, so now I, your PC will detect a, I will detect a serial device. Uh, this is a virtual serial device. So close your Terra term at the terminal software and reopen it. And now you're gonna see one at a different COM port. Uh, open this other one. And now you're talking to bootloader version two. The commands are very similar, uh, but um, uh, to upload the firmware, you're gonna use U command to upload. So U, enter, you have to hit enter, and then it's gonna ask you, are you sure? Yes, enter. Same thing, it's waiting for me to load uh, the firmware this time. So I go file, same as before, X modem, send. Uh, I have to select 1K, of course, and then I will find the EMX firmware this time instead of the bootloader. Select the firmware, loading the firmware, uh, it's almost done. Okay, it's finished, that's it. Uh, reset the board. Ta-da, now it's running TinyCLR OS. 
um, now I can go to TinyCLR uh, instructions and learn about TinyCLR and how to use it, and that will be the same on any device running TinyCLR. Uh, for example, over here, I already have a project uh, that I have created. Uh, this project uses, uh, I'm using a joystick. I have a display connected and I have a button. Let's get this out of the way and show you the display. There's nothing on the display right now because I did not load the program yet. So now, how do I know where to connect things and what to do? Well, first of all, with Gadgeteer, each socket has a name. So if on a joystick, it's A type socket. So that's analog. You don't need to remember what the A stands for. It's just, um, it's an A socket type. Just find any socket type A on the board and that's this where you want to connect it, one of these A sockets. Now, we have, with this latest release, have included pin mapping for everything, including the Gadgeteer boards. So the beauty of this, so for example, like over here, I have a spider in my code. If I hit period, this gives me a list of like all the things available on first spider. So you, can, you don't have the visual designer used before, but IntelliSense tell you a lot of things. So we have ADC channel. Period. And then this gives me what sockets, sockets 9 and 10. I automatically know before looking that sockets 9 and 10 are analog. And then on socket 9, it gives me pins 3, 4, and 5. So I know these pins are analog. And this is how you can quickly find out, find which pins are, you find the pins you need um, without using the designer, using uh, IntelliSense in this case. Now, how do I know which pin 1 and pin 2 and whatnot? We have also documented this. So if you go under documentation, under legacy, there is a, a tab for modules. So under modules, we have included every single module we've ever made. I think some of these are, we never even sold some of these. But anyway, we made it, we put it on there, and we're including the schematics and some details. Now, uh, the goal is over time between us and the community, we can build like simple drivers that you can use to uh, utilize all these modules. And some of them don't even need drivers, like a button. A button, if you look at the, the, uh, what the page says for a button, actually let's look at it right now, a button. It just says uh, pin three is the button on a socket and the LED, there is an LED on the button, like a tiny LED over here, and this LED is on, sock, on pin four. So all you have to do is, this is a pin, like you'd use any pin. So we included the pin mapping for you, you just say for spider or whatever main board you might be using, dot GPIO, dot whatever socket you want, and it gives you a list of the sockets that are available to you. So let's say um, in my code I have uh, socket 10, so that's the one I chose. And then dot, now I need to pick pin three. And that's the pin that's connected to the actual button on the, the, uh, the tactile switch right here on the uh, button. Uh, if I wanna blink the LED, then that would be GPIO uh, dot GPIO pin dot socket 10 dot pin four, because pin four as the documentation uh, shows. Uh, the beauty of this is while you're not using drivers, which makes things a little bit easier, like it did with Gadgeteer, your code is pure TinyCLR. It's pure um, Windows 10 IoT-friendly API. So you're you, moving your code to, let's say, uh, what Raspberry Pi running Windows 10 wouldn't be as much as a challenge because you're not using any um, third party, if Gadgeteer is a third party, you're not using any third party library here. Uh, so in this demo, uh, let me deploy uh, the demo. Uh, so now it's finding the device, compiling, loading, yep. Everything is as expected. Uh, deploy succeeded. Loading the debugger, and this is running. So in this demo, I have a circle on the screen, and I'm using the joystick to move um, a circle, draw a circle on the screen, and I'm using the button to clear the screen. So clear, draw, press the button. Clear. This is everything you need for Gadgeteer. We talked about chain of trust. We talked about how we have your back in, the, uh, in last week's episode. And this is uh, yet another example of how we care and how we are going to be always there to help you as much as we can. And I think we're done talking about old stuff. We have covered all that in details. And now it's time to talk about new things. Some of them you have seen, some you haven't seen. Are you excited? I am very. We'll see you next week. Thank you.